There are three basic types of wire bonds that can be made. Ultrasonic bonding, thermocompression bonding, and thermosonic bonding. Ultrasonic bonding is performed by using a combination of pressure and vibration between the bond wire and the bond pad. This combination produces a cold weld between the bond wire and the bond pad metallization. It works best when bonding an aluminum bond wire to an aluminum bond pad. The second type of bonding is a thermocompression bond. A thermocompression bond is performed by using a combination of pressure and heat to form a connection. This type of bonding is prevalent with gold wires. The bonding tools normally create a ball bond at the leading end of the wire, usually at the die site, and a wedge bond at the trailing end of the wire, usually at the package pad site. Unfortunately, Thermal compression by itself requires very high temperatures of 300 to 400 degrees centigrade, which can damage today's integrated circuit materials. Therefore, we need a better option. The third type of bonding is the thermosonic bond. This technique uses heat, pressure, and vibration to make a connection between the bond wire and the bond pad. This technique is used when lower bonding temperatures are required. One can perform thermosonic bonding at temperatures between 180 and 250 degrees centigrade. This is the most common type of wire bonding today. In the bonding process, the end of the wire is first heated to the melting point. As the end of the wire melts, it forms a ball on the end. Since copper easily oxidizes, the copper bonding process requires an inert gas. The tool is then quickly placed over the bond pad of interest and pressed down onto the bond pad and supplied with ultrasonic energy. This process creates a metallurgical contact between the wire and the bond pad. The tool then allows the gold wire to spool out in an arc to the package lead frame terminal of interest. The second bond is then formed by pressure, heat, and ultrasonic energy at the package terminal. The tool then applies a clamp to the wire, retracts the wire slightly, severing it from the rest of the spool, completing the process. This produces a ball bond on the bond pad and a stitch or crescent bond on the lead frame. A properly formed thermosonic bond should have a flattened ball-like appearance and be centered on the bond pad. The wire should not be pinched or necked down. The flattened ball should also be symmetrical about the axis perpendicular to the die surface. A properly formed bond should also have a small amount of gold aluminum intermetallic at the interface between the bond wire and the bond pad metallization. The other end of the wire has a different type of bond. Instead of a ball bond, there is a stitch bond. The bonding tool heats and presses the gold wire into the package post flattening the wire and creating a stitch bond. As is the case on the bond pad metallization, there should be a small amount of intermetallic at the bond wire package frame bond interface. Often, the packaging for many modern integrated circuits is quite thin. This requires special bonding techniques to accommodate the wire in the package. The wire bonding tool can be programmed to create a series of sharper bends in the wire so that the wire loop has a low profile and will fit within a thin package.